This is a start to finish wheel repair using our DCM3 wheel restore diamond cut wheel machine. Step one is to pick up your wheel and mount it in the diamond cut wheel machine. Our DCM3 can cut wheels up to 32 inches in diameter as well as cutting wheels with the tire still on. If you're leaving the tire on, all you need to do is break the back bead so you can mount the wheel in these jaws you see here in the machine. You do not have to break both beads and that way all you have to do when you're done is reinflate, no mountain balance, and you're ready to go. Alright, so the next step once you've mounted your wheel is the spin test. This is to make sure you've got the wheel mounted solid. It's going to let you see if that wheel is bent. And with the door open, it's slower. Door closed, you can crank that speed all the way up to see if that wheel is good and not wobbling. I've grabbed our laser scanning tape. This next step is the longest part of the whole process here, and that is we are going to get our wheel profile scan. This machine uses a laser scanning process as opposed to the old school touch probe. The laser scan is far more accurate and much faster than the touch probe. What I've done is I have laid a piece of tape over one of the spokes of the wheel from the innermost point to the outermost point. What you're seeing here is I have grabbed a pen and I am marking those two extreme points, the innermost point and the outermost point. Those are gonna give me a reference to drive the laser from one point to the other this little white magnetic piece that I slapped to the side of the machine is the laser cover that protects our expensive little laser there. And now you can see I am on that pedal and on this joystick, I am setting the height with the laser. And then I will start my scan from my innermost point to my outermost point. If you look closely, you can see I finished moving the joystick down, setting the height, and now I am driving my laser to my inner point where I will set the start point and hit record. So with my laser at my innermost point, you'll see I am spinning the wheel 360 degrees. I'm checking to see, does that little dot of that laser look like it is touching that innermost point on all of the spokes? That's why I am spinning the wheel 360 degrees. And I'm happy with it, so I confirm that start position, and I'm about to start my scan. Starting my scan, I am on the foot pedal, and I am on the joystick. This part takes about a minute and a half, I am driving, we like to say, that laser over that piece of white tape that I put on the spoke. So I'm just keeping that laser on the tape and I am driving it from that innermost point to the outermost point. It is tough to see here. You can reference one of our other videos, but on the screen to the right, in real time, a profile is appearing as I scan with the laser.
still scanning. You guessed it, still scanning. And still scanning, almost done. This is a really precision step. You see me leaning in here. I'm trying to make sure my laser's right on the edge and I'm off the pedal. So my scan is finished. Doing that same 360 degree spin to make sure that little dot from my laser is all the way around on the outer edge. So here I'm looking at the scan on the screen. I'm looking at the face of the wheel. Do they match up? Yep, that profile looks like the face of the wheel. Next, select my cut parameters. Here, I am inspecting my profile one more time before I confirm it. Now, I'm selecting which cutting tool I'm using and which way I'm cutting. And then I close the door. Let that tool go to the start position, follow the instructions, and now all I have to do is set the height. So I'm driving my tool down to just on or just above the face of the wheel at my innermost point. So just like the laser, I am now doing a 360 degree test spin with my tool at the start point. I decide I need to raise my height just a hair here and make sure I'm not catching anywhere. Looks good, so I'm gonna confirm my start point and now it's telling me, hey, don't forget to cover that fancy laser, which I do. And at the same time, I always like to then remove my tape. We don't need that anymore. So I close her up and it says start milling. This is my first cut, shadow cut, which means you either don't touch or if you've done this a lot like me, you're just barely touching. This is the opportunity for the operator as the human to look at the machine, to watch the process. Does it look right? Is the tool moving the way you think it should? Is there anything that looks out of the ordinary or something that you don't like? This is your chance before you actually start cutting the wheel to change things or say, hey, I don't like that. As you can see and hear, I have been doing this for a long time and, and once you've done this for a while too, you can set that height so you're just skimming the face of the wheel. I was very confident on this and everything is going according to plan. Now, with the shadow cut complete, we put in our actual cut parameters. So our cut depth, our feed rate, and our spindle speed. I'm putting in some custom numbers, but there are also quick settings labeled one, two, and three, where when you know what you like, you hit one, you hit two, you hit three, and you're in business. just coming down a tenth of a millimeter or even less per pass here. You can hear it is not consistently and fully touching. We're just skating across the face of the wheel. So after this pass, I'm actually going to up my cut depth to a tenth and you'll see how that goes here in just a second. And we call those the coarse cuts to remove most of the damage 
and get the wheel ready to look pretty. So that last pass, I could tell, you know, we're coming down a little bit, but it wasn't fully touching. So now I've set my depth to a tenth of a millimeter. That's traditional course cut parameters. And I'm just letting it run. This is what you will do to remove most of the damage. As you can hear, compared to that last pass, we have a much more consistent sound. That's that cutting sound of having a good full tenth of a millimeter contact across the whole face of the wheel. So we are loving that. I am inspecting the wheel here to see, is it touching everywhere? How's it going? Am I removing the damage? I decide that, nope, I actually need to do some more. So I've decided to uh, check out, hey, what are my one, two, three custom cut settings? And then I've adjusted the speed a little bit. That's what I'm doing here. And I'm just gonna run another pass or two and then assess my situation before I do my finish cuts. There it is, that's that sound that I'm really looking for, is that cutting sound right there, right on the money. I am inspecting the wheel. I see that I still have a little bit of damage, so I'm gonna run it one more pass. Same exact settings as last time, just starting another cycle. Oh yeah, listen to that. I mean, that is a full one-tenth of a millimeter contact consistently across the whole face. That's perfect. Keep in mind, although our diamond cut wheel machine makes your life way easier, does the vast majority of the work for you, it's still operated by a human, so you should be monitoring things, keeping tabs on everything, looking at it yourself to see, is it doing what it should be doing? All right, so let's look at the wheel and how it's looking right now. All right, so we've done our course cuts to remove the bulk of the damage. See here, I'm rubbing my fingernail on it and you can hear that it's rough. That's okay though, this is just the rough cuts. We're doing that to remove the damage, not to look pretty. All right, so let's make this wheel look pretty now. I hope y'all will uh, look past this little bit of wonky camera work here for a few seconds. It was very important to me that I show you in one consistent shot 
the wheel repair. I didn't want to cut it anywhere and piece it together. I wanted y'all to see no BS start to finish. With our course cuts now done, I am going to change the parameters to our finish or fine cut settings, and this will make the wheel look really pretty and match the OEM finish. Now, as you'll see, the wheel is spinning much slower and the tool is moving across the face of the wheel much slower. This is to get that really fine, shiny, nice looking finish. There are many different settings and combinations of settings you can use to get the desired finish you're looking for. For most finish cuts, like you see here, we are using the cut depth at 0.05 millimeter. This is very shallow, but it creates a really good looking finish. All finish cuts do not have to be this slow. Different quality wheels with different quality alloy, different feed rates, different cut depths can create gorgeous finishes at a much faster speed. But I just know with this wheel, slow is the move. So here is our finished wheel. From this stage, you would just clear coat the wheel and it is ready to go back on the customer's car. All right, and let's look at our finished screen here. We removed just under six tenths of a millimeter of material from this wheel, and that's pretty average for most curb rash. Total time, just over 18 and a half minutes.